Hello and welcome, my name is Heather and this is Naturally Catholic. Hi there, if you're new, welcome. My name is Heather, I am a mother of five. I am a homeschooling mom, so I post a lot about homeschool on this channel. We talk a lot about gardening here and other things along those lines of homemaking and living on property. If that's something that's interesting to you, please go ahead and subscribe. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about my three different labor and deliveries. So I'm just gonna give you a little backstory on who I am and how I got to the point to where I am today. I have four beautiful children and I am pregnant with my fifth currently. When I was very young, we started our family and I had no idea what I was doing. I feel like I really didn't have anyone that was pregnant around me to really kind of like look up to and ask questions. So for me, it was kind of like just this new thing that I was kind of going through on my own. Um, so I didn't know a lot about like what I needed to be doing, how I needed to prepare. Um, and so I ended up having a C-section. So I don't know if that was just by, by bad luck or um, if what transpired that morning of my C-section was absolutely necessary. I felt like now as an adult, looking back, I could have totally used my voice a little bit more and maybe I wouldn't have had a C-section from the start but it's just hard to say. So if you're a new mom or a, like maybe a mom who's had like a past C-section and you're wondering about VBAC and the chances that you have, I'm going to talk a little bit about every little um, experience that I've had in labor and delivery in this video. So like I said, when I had my first, I was very young, I was 19 and I had just turned 20 and I gave and I delivered him. So let me just start from the beginning. So I was 38 weeks pregnant and I remember very like vividly what happened. I was going on a walk and I was feeling a lot of pressure um, down in my abdomen, which now I know is just contractions, but I had never experienced them before. Um, and so I was experiencing those and it kind of just con concerned me. So I remember telling my husband that I needed to like just get these checked out. So we went to the hospital that night and they checked me and everything was fine. They did want to monitor me a little bit longer just to make sure that the contractions weren't doing anything. So while they were monitoring me, they did see dips in the baby's heart rate, which concerned them. So they called my doctor and my doctor said, you know, well, since she's here already, why don't we go ahead and do an induction the next day? So when I went in, it was around eight o'clock. So I had to stay the night. They monitored me all night. And then the next morning they said at six o'clock, 6 a.m. we would start the induction. So at 6 a.m. the next morning after watching the baby's heart rate dip and kind of like level back out all night, they decided that they would start me on Pitocin. And here's where I wish I would have used my voice. So I have been on Pitocin with past pregnancies that I have had successful labor and deliveries with, but with this one, they started me on a really high dose of Pitocin, which I think just set me up for failure from the get-go. They started me on Pitocin and I wish I could remember the level. I just remember telling my doctor with my third, the level, and he was like, wow, that's really high to start you on just out of the blue. And I can't remember what it is, but I just remember being way too high and an hour into that, having Pitocin for one hour, the baby's heart rate, rate completely like dipped and it, all the nurses ran in, they checked me, they were trying to find the heart, heart rate, his heart rate and they couldn't find it. And um, it kind of seemed a little scary, but everything ended up being okay because they were able to find it. They talked to my doctor my doctor said, well, you know what? The baby's heart rate has been dipping all night. Why don't we go ahead and just schedule a C-section? So I ended up having my C-section a few hours later and baby was here, healthy. Nothing was wrong with the baby. The heart rate looked great. There wasn't like cord around the neck, around the neck. There wasn't a knot in the umbilical cord. Nothing like that that would have like pushed to have an emergency C-section. So that's kind of the backstory on my C-section, my very first one and why I had to have it. Again, that made, made me a perfect candidate for a VBAC in my future. Fast forward, I think it was two years, two and a half years, I end up having a repeat C-section. So 
This time I did try to find a doctor who was VBAC friendly, which I did find, and he was a really great doctor. I did all the things. I felt like I had a little more knowledge, but I was still very scared and I felt like I didn't again use my voice because at 40 weeks, my doctor said, hey, why don't we go ahead and just schedule um, a repeat C-section? And I wish in that moment I would have said, can we schedule a induction <laughs> instead of that? Or even can we wait another week to give my body time? Because I believe if I remember, this was like eight years ago, so I'm trying to think, but I think I'm pretty sure it was like two centimeters and like 80% of face. Like I know that there was progress being made. So I know that if I would have given my body a little more time, maybe just maybe, um, I would have gone into neighbor labor naturally, or the induction would have been like better. Like it would have, it would have made, I would have had progression and things would have gone smoothly. And so I didn't do that. And out of fear again of like the doctor just telling me like, you don't want the baby to get too big. Um, VBACs can be dangerous if the baby's too big, which I've never had a baby bigger than, I think my last one was seven pounds, two ounces. I've never had a baby bigger than that. So I don't make big babies. And so I didn't say any of that. And I think I was one day shy of 40 weeks and I scheduled a repeat C-section. So there is my second v or my second C-section story. Fast forward, I think four years later, I had a few miscarriages in between that of trying for our third and I found myself pregnant and I was really excited and I felt like I had a little more um, knowledge under my belt, a little more voice. And I found a great doctor through a friend, a family friend. And this doctor was able to give me that light, that hope that I had been looking for. So I was able to have a VBAC with that doctor. He let me go up to 40, I actually know. So let's rewind a little bit. So I'm thinking of my fourth, my third, so two C-sections and then my third birth, I actually went to 38 weeks and seven days or six days just before 39 weeks. Um, and I, I went into labor naturally, my water broke. So I went into labor, my water broke at 8 a.m. in the morning. And then I went to the hospital, like so surprised that my water just broke, kind of a little nervous, kind of like excited but also just more or less excited that something happened. <laughs> and so I went to the hospital and I remember like not much going on. They ended up giving me Pitocin, but they gave me a really low dose. I think it was just like one and Pitocin worked, picked up my contractions and then they tapered me off of the Pitocin for a little bit. And then they put me back on it for a little bit. And that was like off and on for a few hours. I ended up laboring for 26 hours before I actually had him. Um, but the whole time my doctor was totally okay with like the fact that my water had been broken for that long. He was monitored, monitored. I cannot say that word. He was watching us closely. I was fine. Baby's heart rate was fine. Even when the baby's heart rate would dip, he would still say, okay, well, you know, this is stressful obviously on you and baby. So that's natural, but he didn't like let that worry him at all. He was very good about watching us. And it was just such a positive experience. So this is where um, I think I was, it was like 2 a.m. I had him at 10 a.m. So yeah, so this was around the 18 hour mark. And I was trying to do a natural labor and delivery. And it was just like, at that point, I was so exhausted and so tired. And I think because this was truly my body's first time to go into labor and labor naturally, it was just taking long. It was taking a little bit longer than, you know, if this would really truly be my third labor and my body was naturally doing it. So it took a little while and I ended up getting the epidural, which I wish I wouldn't have, but I let the nurses and my husband kind of like convince me into thinking, you know, you're really tired, which I was, it was a good choice in the moment, but they were just, you know, they're like, you're really tired. You should try to get the epidural. It'll allow you to sleep. It'll allow you to rest. So I ended up getting it and it only worked on half of my body. And I remember this because it was so, it was so annoying to have only one of my legs working and my other leg, like just like completely numb to where I couldn't even move it. So I could still feel everything going on and I was cramping and 
as soon as I got the epidural, I felt like things started to go wrong. I felt like the baby's heart rate started dipping. My blood pressure was plummeting. And so I had to be given blood pressure medication. I had to wear an oxygen mask. Um, I had to stay on like my right, my, no, my left side. And so I felt like the epidural definitely like interfered a little bit with that, that, uh, labor. Um, but I ended up having a vaginal birth and it was probably the best feeling. And it was everything that I thought and hoped that it would be ex being able to experience that being able to finally feel like as a woman, I did what my body was made to do. And so having that just put so much confidence under, under me that it just, I don't know, it just does something to you when you're able to finally be able to experience like giving birth naturally. I'm not trying to say that mothers who only have C-sections are not like experiencing the joy of having a child and bringing a child into the world. It's just such a different experience to be able to let your body do it naturally. Um, so that was just such an amazing moment for me. Fast forward to my fourth, finding out I was having my first daughter. So I have three boys and then her, and then we don't know what this one is. We're gonna wait to find out, but fast forward to her, I was able to use the same doctor, thank God. And um, he also let me go, I think I was 41 weeks and I did not go into labor naturally. I tried everything and I think at my 41 week checkup when I was finally like, okay, let's schedule this induction because clearly this child is not coming. I was three centimeters, almost four. And I was, I wanna say I was like 90% effaced. I don't even remember all the terms and all the things. I think I was super thin. Um, I had lost my mucus plug, all those things that point to like, oh, you're going to be in labor soon and nothing like constant contractions all the time and just nothing. And so if I maybe would have gone a little bit longer, maybe she would have come naturally. But at that point I was like done, like I was tapped out <laughs> and there was other variables. If you go to my channel, you can, you can see like, you can see that we were living in an RV at the time, building on our property and it was extremely stressful and I was just ready to get this baby out of me. So I was able to have a successful induction and I think the fact that I was so close to going into labor naturally really helped with the induction. So they started me on Pitocin again and it was a one, very low, and I only needed like one dose and it just like took off. From there my labor took off and I was in labor for six hours. They started the Pitocin at 11 I had her at 520 and so it just like it started my Pitocin and my contractions just picked up on their own. They stopped it. I didn't need it anymore. Um, I was able to go through all of the contractions really easily and let me tell you, if you're looking um, into having a natural birth, in my opinion and in my experience, the hardest part is transition which you'll get the shakes you'll feel nauseous and you'll just know like your body's going to transition you change into like this whole person like like you can't talk you're focused and it just it changes your whole like mood um and then once i hit transition an hour later i was a 10 and i was ready so transition i think you're about a six or a seven and then I was ready to push. So I went through transition and then I went to a 10 like super quickly and um, and it was time to push. And I was thinking that I had gone through like the hard part, right? Like laboring naturally, getting through the contractions, being able to do that was like the hard part. But the hardest part of having a like natural labor and delivery is the pushing. For me, at least, like the pushing, they say that, like, I remember the nurses telling me like, oh, the pushing is going to feel so good because you're going to be able to push the pain away and it's just going to, each push is going to help you feel better to get through it. That was not the case for me. Each push felt like someone was ripping my legs apart and my body was being split in half. That is what it felt like for me. I don't know, maybe you had a different experience, but that was my experience and it was, it was painful. I definitely felt the ring of fire. I felt when the baby's head came out and then that instant relief, and this is probably the only relief I had when I was pushing, was when the baby like was out, like coming out and I felt her entire body like pass through. And 
then this instant amount of like relief of like, oh my gosh, finally it's over. Um, and you're just in so much like shock that, you know, and you have these rush of hormones going through you that you're just like, all you can do is just like sit there and you're like, oh my gosh, like, did that really just happen? <laughs> it was such an overwhelming experience. I was proud of myself for being able to do it naturally. And I was proud of myself for being able to have another like successful VBAC. Like it was such a fear that it would only work one time and my body wouldn't know what to do again. But my body was actually like, like primed and knew what to do and it was ready to go through this experience again and at a lot quicker of a time only six hours and so that was a really great experience and um if i could go back which i oh my gosh why did i even say that i'm pregnant right now so going now into this pregnancy i plan on doing a natural uh labor and delivery again because for me, there was less intervention. I felt amazing right after. I was able to get up a lot quicker. My recovery was a lot better. And I was just not like drowsy or loopy or numb. And it just was such a, a great experience. And yeah, you're in a lot of pain in the moment. But once you get past that, it's all worth it. And it's all over. And you just forget about it. Like instantly you forget about it. You're like, holy moly, like that was crazy. But now I have this beautiful baby and it's just all so worth it. And so that is the plan for baby number five. Um, and so I guess the point of this whole video is to inspire you. Because if you were going through what I went through or you were having multiple C-sections and you just feel like it's never going to happen for you, I would encourage you to do your research, to try to find doctors uh, to help you, to give you a chance at being able to labor and to have your VBAC because even if you've had three C-sections, I believe there are doctors that will still give you a chance. So use your voice and don't be afraid to do what you want to do. My baby just woke up. My baby just woke up. Um, anyway, so if this is you and you want to go into labor naturally, or maybe you just want to go to 40 weeks, or maybe you don't want to start Pitocin, or you want your water, like whatever it is that you want to do, use your voice because if you don't, then what you want is never going to be done and you will miss out on your chance of being able to have your natural labor and delivery. That is it for this video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this. This was kind of just like a, a story, like talking to you about like what I've experienced, what I've gone through. And I'm just hoping that if you're watching this, that you're able to relate to it and find some inspiration to be able to have your labor and delivery the way that you want and the way that you've dreamed about having it. Most importantly, don't forget to pray about it. That is something that was very important through my whole entire process. And my whole entire story was praying and trusting in God and leaving all of my fear and anxiety to him. And I truly believe that when I did that, I was able to embrace the process of what was going on and like being able to go into that full trust of like, okay, Lord, if this is going to happen, I leave it in your hands. And, and it did. And I, and I 100% believe that it was because I trust, I trusted in God and I just let him take full control of everything that was going on. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, God bless.